Is Baltimore ugly city? Nah, I don't think Baltimore ugly city at all. Not at all. It's bad things that happen here, but it's a beautiful city to me. I lived here all my life. No, I don't think so. I don't think that Baltimore is an ugly city. I think that it has its good and its bad. You know, it has good good parts and bad parts. It's going to out in Baltimore County, and it looks beautiful. Like it looks like Pennsylvania or Virginia or something like that. For real. So, I mean, honestly, like, so I'm gonna say, like, I'm gonna all wrap it up. Is no, Baltimore is not an ugly city. I am Marvin Ferguson Jr., head mechanic and owner of BM Tuning. Started working on cars on the street. Like, I would basically have customers and friends that needed stuff done, and I would start scheduling it like a real business. That's the way I would practice. So, what I did was, once my clientele got steady, I had uh, basically linked up with uh, my father, a good friend, Mr. Earl, and he said, hey, I'm opening up the wheel deal. You know, I'm opening up that side over there. I wanna, you know, get a mechanic in there. I wanna, you can rent that space from me, you know what I mean? And they had been closed for a while, so I said, serious, serious, you know what I mean? I just jumped on it. So from then, I mean, it was about a year ago, I had my own space in there, you know what I mean? I had my own shop. I, I was just so amazed. It, it didn't even kick into like I fixed the first like five cars in my own shop. I was just sitting here like, man, no answer to nobody. This is kind of weird. You know what I mean? It wasn't. It wasn't just like, yeah, I'm the man. I'm I'm ready to rock and roll. It was just like, this is weird. I finally made it. So, but it was just like, what's next? So that's when you started. I started. Had to get more equipment, much bigger space. Had to fix this place up. It wasn't really nothing, it wasn't no paint, it wasn't nothing. I had to get the place looking nice, you know what I mean? Enough, at least it was always a nice space, but it was, it needed to be presentable for the, for the customers, like you know what I mean? Like my Mustang, it's easy as hell to work on logically, but it's hard as shit because all the bolts are rusted. Right. That car hasn't been made in 1991, you know what I mean? Right. What year is it now? 2015. Right. That's a long time for bolts to be in, eat, yeah. pull stuff in, you know what I mean? Right. Versus if I'm working on a 2012, 2013, 14, 15, bolts come right out, you know what I mean? It's just been put together. So Stuff that way. isn't breaking as you're taking it out. Like sometimes you can take a, a bolt out and the hinge snap straight off, right. boom. Now you gotta tap that out. That's gonna take you, that's to change your whole day. Mm. Now you're working on one screw for a whole day. You know what I mean? Normal day for being a tune it starts the day before. <laughs> Maybe the week before. Uh, you line up what jobs you have still left in the shop. Um, what customers paid and what customers didn't pay. What parts you can get, what parts you can't get that day. You know what I mean? Um, I come into the shop, I get there early to open up. And then Mr. comes in around about 11 or 12 because he sleeps late. <laughs> we call it two shifts. I got the morning shifts and he night shift. <laughs> so, but we leave at the same time. So, uh, we come in basically, we line up all of you know, what we got to do that day. Sometimes it's what we feel like doing. It's like, nah. <laughs> nah. We line up what we can do, like I said the first time. And uh, we basically try to get the cars out as efficient as we can and working right so they don't return. You know what I mean? Sometimes we have issues with faulty parts. We may have an issue with something we just can't fix at that time. But we try to get it out as fast as we can. I could go to the shop for a week and not get paid and I'm not depressed because I know I'm making a difference. You know what I mean? I'm doing something that I love to do. It's a, it's a place for people to go. It's a place for people to talk about their problems and good times, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like a barbershop, but 
but better. <laughs> Cause it's cars there, you know what I mean? Like all my friends, when they get off of work, I can tell they can't wait to get them to the shop. You know what I mean? Like, what are we doing next? What bikes out there? It's excitement. What cars out there? What happened? So we can make or break a person's day or, or week. The car's broke, they can't get to work. You know what I mean? I have customers that come to me and mom and I really don't have have uh, money to get this done. And I'll tell I'll show them a cheaper route to go and still have their car running. Or I'll say, look, get your parts. Give me half the labor, pay me when you can, or just look out for me the next time you need. You know, I try to help people out as much as I can. So a mechanic is more than just a mechanic, especially a good one. You know, you're you listen to people's problems all the time. Uh, you you not only fix their car, you you gain a relationship with people. You know what I mean? And they trust you. So it's not all about the money for me and Mister. If it was all about the money, then we wouldn't be working on cars. <laughs> Not not dealing with the public. It's more so we like what we're doing. We love cars. We love fixing stuff. We like me personally. I like doing something where I can see results. Like it's probably like somebody who paints or fixes a house. At the end, they can step back, forget the money, and say, "I did that." You know what I mean? Or that's I can see it working. You know what I mean? So that's what it is for me. This is WJZ TV. In Northwest Baltimore, hundreds of dirt bikers take to the streets, riding erratically up and down the roads. WJZ is alive along Reistertown Road. Amy Yancey with more on the dozens of officers called to assess the situation that's still developing right now. Amy? Well, Tracy, the group is definitely shrinking since we've been out here, but there are still dozens of dirt bikes in the area, as well as plenty of spectators. Right now, they're riding around the intersection. Others are hunkering down at the BP gas station uh, that you're looking at now. At one point, police were forced to call for reinforcements. They say it's a constant problem, and it's only getting worse. The younger crowd, they love to be here. They love to the support, you know, the wheel deal, which is what my business, you know, this building used to be known as wheel deal, but it's, uh, you know, my shop is being in tuning. To the older crowd, they don't like to come get their car fixed because they watch the news. They see nothing but the negative side of it. And, you know, they, you know, older crowd really don't feel safe around the dirt bikes and stuff like that. As far as me, I totally don't see it affecting my business at all because you know when it comes to kids on those dirt bikes it's the only way that they it's the only outlet that they have right about now you know Baltimore really doesn't have many recreation centers you know a lot of families are broken up you know it's not too many mom and dad families so a dirt bike to some kids in the city is everything you know me growing up I love dirt bikes motorcycles anything with an engine and a lot of those kids that ride dirt bikes, they love cars and anything with an engine too. So, you know, I just channeled minds into a positive way. I said, you know, I don't want to be locked up. I don't want to be in trouble. So I'm going to pick up a tool, learn how to fix them. At the same time, I'm going to race them. I mean, uh, you know, I'm into racing all the way around the board, you know. Um, when it comes to those kids with the dirt bikes, like, I feel them. Like, I, I understand riding on the street is wrong and all that type of stuff, but... It's an outlet, you know. A lot of kids come up in poverty in the city. Don't their families broken up? So when they jump on their dirt bike, man, they free. They free from all the stress, all the drama, you know, bills, just just stuff that a kid can actually be a kid at that time. And there's a lot of grown ups on them bikes. That's they're a big kid again. Cause when I get on them, I feel like a big kid again. You know what I mean? My mom couldn't afford to get me a dirt bike when I was little, so I get them now, and I'm just like. Super fun, you know what I mean? Dirt bikes are fun. But when it comes to me with cars, when I race cars, I feel like how they feel on a dirt bike. Like, I'm free. Like, I don't think about drama, I don't drink about bills, I don't think about, you know, anything negative. It's just what I'm doing at that time. And sometimes people gotta get into that mode and, you know, be free. So, that's how I feel about dirt bikes and my business. I'm about to run 
let's start this bitch. I'm gonna ride this bitch over to the grass. I'm about to ride this over to the grass. Oh. Transform BNM tuning from an auto repair shop to a tuning shop, like meaning straight race cars. Like I'm working on rebuilding motors, we putting in turbo kits, you know, superchargers, machine work, dynos, stuff like that. The fun stuff, the big money stuff, you know, not so much of the headache stuff. Blown head gaskets, broken alternators. Working on a 1998 Tercel. I want to work on another Mustang. So after I get to fix it, I get to drive it. You know what I mean? I want to work on Corvettes. I want to work on raced out Hondas. I want to work on the fun stuff. And you know, Baltimore City don't have no speed shops that I know of. You know what I mean? You got to go to Glen Burnie. You got to go to Pasadena. You got to go, you know what I mean? The city, you know what I mean? It's, we, we well do for a speed shop, you know what I mean? And not only a place where you can buy parts, a place you can have them installed, you know what I mean? You, know, you always got rim shops in Baltimore City. Uh, we need some, some tuned shops, you know what I mean? So we can have fun. We don't have to go far out to get our car tuned, you know what I mean? So that's one of my ultimate goals. And to have more than one, a chain of being in tunings. I want to start from this here. Everybody know me. Hey, man, when we was at the wheel deal, I want to have four or five more of these all around the city, all in the county. You know what I mean? The next one I want to open up, which I'm really trying to work on that now, is I want it to be in the county, you know what I mean? So I can get more broad with it, you know what I mean? It's not just me. I want to hire other people. I want to create jobs, you know what I mean? I want to help. I want to help people. So, you know, if you ask any of my customers, I help all the time. I try to keep my prices low. I try to do the best work I can do. Um, so, yeah, my, my ultimate goal is not only to help people, but to open up a chain of B&Ms and to it to be a tune shop, you know what I mean? Tuning race cars. I mean, we already into that a little bit, but we really don't, we're not all the way there. We don't have the funding for that, you know what I mean? We we getting it together. So, yeah, that's some of my goals for the, for the shop.